Bollingen, 12th of February, 1951. Dear friend, many thanks for your kind letter. It does me good to hear that you accept my humanity. I only hope that this is not too difficult for you. I do not wish to reproach you. But I don't like standing there as the only sinner, conscious of having to accept the indulgent gift of having my sins forgiven. I would be very happy to converse with you on any subject close to your heart, as I have little opportunity to talk with other men. I have had some friends, uh, but they have died. To speak with others, that is, to speak in such a way that one gets something from it, is therefore very difficult, because they have no relation to my spiritual world and thus feel overextended. In contrast, an inconsequential conversation seems to me to be too wearisome and makes me as tired as if I had undertaken the most uh, laborious work. People make it too difficult for me, for I cannot and will not torture myself with utility. I'm always available for something substantial. I hope we will soon have the opportunity for a conversation. With best wishes, yours, Carl. Küssnacht, 4th of March, 1951. Dear friend, please forgive me if I trouble you with another unbidden letter. Although I constantly have a little time for personal activities, I have taken or stolen the necessary time to face my friends. I must inform you that I am not able to see any connection between your remark about my arbitrary method in Puncto Theory, on the one hand, and the degree of redemption or lack of redemption of the club members, and your worldview, on the other. I have no experience of redemption, as I have never yet encountered and redeemed. I must almost conclude from your remark that you consider redemption the goal of my psychotherapy. But that would be a not insignificant error. The truth would be rather the opposite. It would be hard to be more convinced of the significance of Christianity than I am. Only one can be convinced of it in a different way. With best wishes, Jürgen Jung. Zurich, 14th March, 1951. Dear friend, it moves me deeply that you took the trouble to write me such a long, detailed, and most profoundly incisive letter. You experience a growing distance in our correspondence. I experience it as a paradoxical expression of an intimacy. This is possible only when we are able not only to agree to disagree, about particulars, but we together, each from his own location, try to discover the other's position within the greater whole, for example, in the current of contemporary cultural awareness. This is my constant position in relation to you. We are both approaching the end of our lives. In the last two months, I have lost eight friends and would be loath to lose another one not through the final unavoidable loss, but principally due to misunderstandings and misinterpretation. I, therefore, appeal a male informato ad melius informandum. Incidentally, I have never confused psychotherapy with redemption, and in using the word I was alluding more to Nietzsche's comment, thus rather to an impression than a theory. It would never occur to me to trivialize your immense knowledge and your experience. I am astounded by it. But it doesn't take away the freedom of my own critical judgment. And your undeniable humility towards the transcendent would also prohibit me from placating myself once and for all with an Atos effa. You seem to want to renounce my friendship. This is quite unilateral, and I am unwilling to take part in it. 
I am distressed that you think I am capable of arrogance in a thoroughly, constructively critical debate in which I show no condescension, but am exercising my freedom and clearly showing you the honor and esteem that I offer to an initiator and psycho-pioneer who initiated me into mysteries such that I will remain bound to him my whole life, whatever befalls even when his human willingness and intimacy do not come my way. Yet I must retract this word right away, since your long letter proves quite the opposite. You are hurt, and therefore bitter. I had no intention of hurting you, or even of lecturing you. We don't have enough time left for that now. And even if you were right, I would assume that your greatness and your knowledge of the interdialectic of the opposites would enable you to meet even an errant or inadequate adept with understanding and insight in such a quaternity full humanity. Much remains unsaid. I cannot ask such an extensive correspondence from you. Whether my reply will make possible a desired meeting I must leave to you. I am now, as always, in undiminished respect and friendship. Yours, Adolf Keller. Küstler wrote a few days before 21st of March, 1951. I am sincerely grateful to you for your comprehensive reply. You really must not assume that I do not value your friendship. It's precisely because I do value it that I try to explain to you in broad detail what was working me. Your letter helps me to understand where the difficulties in transmission lay. I oppose the backwardness of Protestantism. I don't want it to give up its leading position. I don't want to go back to the unconscious fog of Catholic concretism. Therefore, I also battle against Protestant concretism, historicity, and the abstractness of the Protestant message, which today can only be understood as a historical remnant. If Christ means anything to me, it is only as a symbol. The historical figure he might just as well be called Pythagoras, Lao Tse, Zarathustra, and so on. I find a historical Jesus completely unedifying, simply interesting because controversial. I say this so that you will know where I stand. I will be happy if despite this you want to talk with me. If you can spend time for it, I am willing. Once again, many thanks for your considerate letter, full of goodwill. Your call.